Okay, let's move on to question five. It's another functions question. Now it's a little bit more difficult. We got a couple of different functions sitting on one set of axes. So this is often where students panic. Best thing to do is read the information, see whether you can understand what's going on, and then use the questions as your guide to understanding what is actually happening. So it says, in the diagram below, the graphs of f of x equals 2p to the x plus q. So you should be thinking to yourself, okay, I know that that is um, an exponential graph. Um, and g of x equals log, right, with a base t to the x. So we know that's a log graph. We know that the log is um, going to be sort of our inverse function of our exponent exponents function so we're not too phased about it but we know that we're gonna to have to do a bit of work and a bit of manipulation because there's a couple of unknowns so it says this is the origin the graphs are on a common axis um, and they share an x-intercept right at an x-intercept your y equals zero and um, the this d value here is a y-intercept so your x is going to equal zero right asymptotes of f and the graph of g passes through a, which is two and negative one. So we know this asymptote over here is where y equals negative one. So we really have a bit of information, okay? Um, e, a, b is a line perpendicular to the axis. So basically they all have the same x value, the same x value, right? The same x value, right? Which in this case is going to be two. So I've written all the information they've given me onto the graph. If you don't like doing that, that's up to you. But for me, it just helps contextualize what I'm doing. And then it says, determine the value of t g of x uh, in g of x equals log t x. Okay, so effectively what we're going to do is we're wanting to find that t value there. What do we know about the g of x, right? We know that it goes through this point here, right? There's my g of x, it goes through a, so it's going to be a substitution exercise, right? So we're going to say, okay, our y value is going to equal log t of 2, right? Here you have to go and use your understanding of exponents, right? We know that our exponents, we generally say base to our exponents equals um, that value in our log, right? And then, so we're basically going here from log form to exponent form. You need to be able to do that. Please go review your log rules if you're not happy with that. Then what we want to do is we want to get just t. We don't want t to the negative one. So here, if we want to get rid of negative one, we would just raise it to another negative one because negative one times by negative one gives me one. But what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So we know that t is going to equal 2 to the negative 1. t is going to be 1 over 2. Okay, right? So as much as it's only for two marks, it does leverage quite a bit of um, your understanding of functions, of um, exponents and logs. And um, so you need to make sure that you're comfortable with all those rules. Everything that I've done here is just a rule. Then it says, write the coordinates of c. Right, so C, we know that both graphs go through C. We, we were told that up front, right? So now we actually have the G of X. We know equals log of a half X. We know that, right? And we know that our Y value at C is going to be zero because it is a X intercept. So we just say here zero equals log to a half X because that's what we're solving for. Again, go and change it into exponent form. So it's going to be, right, um, we're going to go a half to the power of zero equals x, right? What does anything to the power of zero equal? It equals one. So the coordinates of c are going to be one and zero. Please make sure that you write the coordinates and not just the one, because it did ask specifically for the coordinates, right? So we've done a bit of work there, not unexpected. We knew they would ask us to find our unknowns, but let's now go on to what is probably going to be the, the finding of P and Q as well. But let's go move on to our next question. So now, as expected, it says determine the value of P, showing all working out. What's a bit tricky here is you have to keep flipping, right? So what I would do is I would just write f of x out like this, right? Um, so that we have it, so that we're not continually flipping around because it's a bit irritating, to be honest. So we're finding P. 
Now, what's interesting here is to find P, we actually need to find Q. Okay, but Q is not difficult, but Q, because Q is just our asymptote. We identified our asymptote up front. We said it is Y equals negative 1. How do we know that? They gave us a point on the line. We know that a line drawn through a Y value is going to have the same Y value, right, across that line, this um, horizontal line. So we know that f of x is going to equal 2p to the x minus 1. So we have q already. Then we say, okay, well, what's a point on f of x? So let's go look for a point. Um, so, so here is f of x. The only point that we have on f of x currently is our intercept, right, which is 0, which is 1 and 0. We just worked that out previously. So we can use that. So let's go see if we can use that. So c gives me 1 and 0, so y is going to be 0, right? Remember f of x is the same as y, so 2 to the p, that's a 1, minus 1. That's going to then become that, and we have found our p-value. Okay, so do you see there's an element of interpretation? There's an element in these questions that you often use your answer from the previous questions, so be prepared to do that. It then says... <laughs> Please determine the coordinates of D. So let's go and see where D is. D is just the y-intercept of my F graph. So we know that my F graph equals um, this. Okay, I'm just subbing in my p-value that I've worked out. So D is effectively, what did I say it was? My y-intercept. And my y-intercept, x equals 0. So put that in. Okay, you literally just solve that. That's going to become 2 because anything to the power of 0 is 1, right? And we can see that that's going to equal 1. So my coordinates of D are 0 and 1. Please make sure that you write out the coordinates. You don't just find this f of x value and leave it like that. It's specifically asked for the coordinates. Let's now.